they look at you like, why are you in the stores if you can't afford anything? <laughs> are you yeah. going to buy some? <laughs> yeah. yeah, like if I want to walk in Fabiani and buy a 2000 Rand perfume, don't look at me like I can't buy it. Like I wouldn't be in that store if I knew I couldn't buy it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I had, a, I had a friend of mine, he was actually, if if you've seen him, he's, he's your, um, how shall I say, without being insulting to um, to, to a generation that, um, that dressed like that and appear like that, but he's, he's, your, he's your typical um, f- rural um, um, elderly person, elderly, um, referring to over 50, owns his own business. Um, very successful. He started the business 25 years from ago uh, from scratch. Um, very successful. Owns mul- oh, multiple properties, um, and he dresses in your typical khaki shorts, um, Crocs, um, two-tone khaki shirts. Um, has a very unmanicured beard. That he presents, so if you can, it looks like a, um, it's like Einstein. I mean, there's there's no particular hairstyle. It's just a, um, and if you picture that person walking into the Mercedes dealership in, and I won't say where, um, walking around on the floor, looking at the different vehicles, especially the ML 500s in that range. You can understand, like you said, uh, as I showed, you can understand where the salesperson becomes like, oh, geez, this person actually probably is waiting for his wife who's shopping, so he's just walking. He's not really going to buy. Long and the short of it, I went with him one day when he actually was looking for a new vehicle. Um, because of the way he was treated, he went to a different dealership and he bought three vehicles. He was actually looking for three SUVs, um, one for himself, for his wife, replacing the ones that they have and one for the business. Um, but you can just imagine um, the commission that that poor salesperson lost out because he just immediately, oh, you know, what? Yeah, this person's not going to, yeah, and, and treat them differently. You don't know. As I said to my students when I was also still um, um, at, at the previous college when, when, and we did role playing, when you walk into a gym, and I was training personal trainers at that stage, when you walk into a gym, or when you work in a gym on the floor as a trainer or as a, a, a fitness instructor, that client who's be, basically who's busy um, bench pressing or he's um, or he's in one of the um, 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 working in one of the stations, he's dressed in his t-shirt and training shorts. You don't know if he's a doctor. You don't know if he's a mechanic. You don't know if he's a salesperson. You don't know what they do as a profession. And you have to treat them all equally because of that. You can't talk down on somebody because he's dressed in a specific way. I've learned from hard experience myself when I just started in the industry about 30 years ago as well. Uh, very quick to judge, and, and, and especially on, on, on appearance. Um, and quickly realized that hmm, major mistake. So I think that's a common mistake that people make. But um, in general, um, if we go back a few slides in in um, this presentation, where we said that if you really want to offer top class customer service, you should be focusing on, or you should put the customer at the start and the end of the value chain and not only start offering the service to the customer once they have purchased and now i think oh geez this this customer has spent a lot of money now we need to keep them happy and we need to retain them because they can maybe in a couple of months time come back and spend the same amount or more uh, and hopefully later on we can convert them to become loyal customers it, customer service doesn't start once the customer only once the customer has um, has purchased a product or item from your business. It starts right at the start, even before, um, um, and, and definitely during the entire um, selling process, up to the point when I make a decision. And because in this chapter, dealing with uh, a customer-centered or um, customer-orientated approach to business, that's very much um, 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 
based on forming relationships, long-term relationships to your customers. Um, you're not going to be successful in a business if, 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 you, if you don't do that um, and if you are just chasing a sale. Right. Um, <clears throat> you've seen on the screen homework that you can do for yourself. Um, I'm going to um, just spend some time in explaining to you what um, the just-in-time system is. Um, and it's going to take longer than five minutes, so I'll review it again tomorrow when we continue. Just in time, basically, um, and on, on that um, um, image that you have on the screen at the moment, the slide you have on the screen at the moment, I've uploaded that link to that video on Toyota, onto um, Canvas already. So have a look at that. It's four minutes. It will explain to you entirely what the just in time system is, where it originated. But in, a, in, 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 in um, summary, basically what it means is that traditionally businesses have been producing products and they were um, not focused so much on delivering um, a quality product. Um, they were expecting that there can be problems with some of the products. Therefore, they kept extra stock uh, in case they have to replace it. Uh, instead of improving the whole process, um, a production process to make, um, to, to um, reduce um, the mistakes that can be made by making the system more efficient um, and also reducing um, the, 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 the inventory that they had to um, that they had to keep. Because if you um, traditionally manufactured something, you also manufactured one or two extras in case you have to replace broken items. Uh, just in time focuses on, we're not going to do that. We're going to make the whole process um, of production more efficient. We're going to make the whole process of distribution more efficient. So we're not going to keep extra stock. If you need something, we're going to actually uh, manufacture it. And because of our system being so efficient, it will be done quicker. It will be available and distributed quicker. And we don't have to keep any stock. So there's going to be a, a day's delay. But it would have been a day's delay anyway to replace a product um, to get it to the customer, um, or get it delivered to the customer. So it's a more efficient process of ensuring that um, we do not plan for the, un we are prepared if something goes wrong, but we're not going to um, open a warehouse and keep a lot of inventory in storage um, in case something goes wrong. The cost of uh, keeping those extra in storage if something goes wrong is so much higher than actually opening more manufacturing plants that can quickly produce that product and deliver it when something happens. So we wait until something happens um, and then we quickly, because we're efficient, manufacture it and deliver it to you. It was done in Japan. It was done in Japan um, straight after the Second World War when they basically had to rebuild the entire country. And they realized that there's a shortage of money. Um, we've got to um, try and be as efficient as possible. And if there's anybody um, who disagrees with me, um, I would like you to justify it. But if there is a country in the world when it comes to efficiency, uh, reliability, um, and we've seen it again now um, um, during the, um, the Olympic Games and the Paralympic Games, those people have a work ethic bar none. They will produce anything in a most efficient way, uh, do it with a smile and repeat it tomorrow. Why? Because that's just the way it is. Uh, if you expect anything less, well, <laughs> I'm sorry, but this is not how we do it. Um, and, and, and that's a sort of a, to me, they are a benchmark as to, um, as to quality product combined with quality service and the manner in which they do it. Nobody, especially uh, our professional athletes, and I'm not just talking about athletes who attended the Olympic Games. Our rugby players have been playing um, um, in, in Japan for the last number of years. They come back and they say it's so nice to experience the efficiency. There's always enough of everything. It's always working. It's always on time. They fired a Japanese train driver the other day because 
<laughs> the train was late for 20 seconds. It was not his fault. There's nothing you could do about it. I hope he was been reinstated later. But they yeah, they said, sorry, this is not the standard. Cheers. Anyway, um, have a look at that um, at that um, video. That link, as I said, on um, I've, I've lo uploaded that onto Canvas. It's available on Canvas. Watch it. We chat about um, just in time again tomorrow, um, and especially how that relates to um, relationship marketing and selling. Thanks very much. My apologies for the interruption. My apologies for um, the lost in trans um, transmission. Um, maybe I'll see some of you on campus tomorrow. Maybe I won't. Um, if we do see each other on campus tomorrow, it would be um, during it would be during the seventh and eighth period uh, in room three ten. Otherwise, good luck with your assignments. Um, now you guys are under a lot of pressure, so I'm not going to take up too much of your time anymore. Thanks for uh, attending the session. Um, we'll chat again um, tomorrow. Keep well. Thank you, sir. It's a pleasure.